Right, I'm probably better at Q&A than I am uh, making a speech, so go ahead. At what point, Coach Matt Smith, 104 The New Fan, at what point did Coach Prime reach out to you initially to contact you about your interest possibly in this position? Uh, yeah, we spoke after the season. Um, the NFL season is such a long year. Uh, you're trying to reintroduce yourself to your children and to your wife. and um, So we spoke, and then my family would go to Tampa. Uh, again, a reintroduction to, to being a husband and being a father. So we Zoomed a couple times. That's the, the beauty of technology, is you can be here without being here. And then uh, I came out uh, probably late January. And um, you know, the off season is the off season for everybody. So you're kind of working through some things. And uh, I always said, you know, right person, right place. And, and obviously, I felt, uh, felt a great connection with the head coach. And then uh, I told this story, you know, you're taking 36 from Denver and you come over the hill and you kind of have a look at that little lookout spot and like, oh, this is, this is the right place. So I've uh, been really, really happy so far. Hey, Coach Ryan, hey. Joinsburg from DNVR. When you looked at this team last year on film, what were some of the things that stood out to you and some of the players that stood out to you? Yeah, I think uh, the skill positions are, are elite. You know, we have uh, really, really great skill players. Um, I think the vision is what it is. I think it's our job. Uh, as coaches, if you do it right, in my personal opinion, to kind of take a, a 30,000 foot view of, of the roster and say, okay, hey, maybe we've got to do some things I haven't done in the past. So it won't be the same playbook that we've had in Cincinnati or that we had at Vanderbilt or we had at Furman. I think you've got to take the spring, you've got to look at who you have and put people in positions to be successful. So that's what we're doing as a staff. Um, you know, I was phenomenally fortunate to walk in here and have a staff intact, guys that know the players. Um, so you find yourself earning their trust as well as the players' trust. I mean, this is the players-driven system, obviously. they got to cross the white line and go play. Um, so, no, I, I've been really, really happy with everybody. I, I think with any new coach or new coordinator that comes in, you know, everybody's got a blank slate, and uh, I think that's good for all parties involved. Hey, Coach. Brian hey. Allison, Bulls here. Hey, Brian. And if, uh, talking to Bob Shoot uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. Um, he was talking about when you were playing for him that he saw coach qualities in you. So I'm just curious, like, when did you kind of – start getting those juices to be a coach? Yeah, well, when you're not very good, uh, you got to take every avenue you can. Um, so I transferred to William and Mary. I started off at Western Michigan. I uh, gave him an ACL and a hand. Started snowing in October, and I figured, hey, this is a little cold for me. Uh, so I transferred to William and Mary. Bob Shoup was just coming in, um, and we were the new guys, and, and we became very close. My life is forever changed because of him. I'm forever indebted. Uh, you know, he taught me the game in, in a, the way that I still view it, you know, a two-by-two, two, a three-by-one. Um, and we had some talented guys, and that, that was kind of my role. You know, I, I made 11 probably, and I had to get other people lined up. So um, I knew the game was going to quit on me eventually, and, and it's really all I know. Um, it, it's all I'm probably decent at, even if you ask my wife. And uh, so it, it's been a lot of fun, and I would not be here without him, so I'm forever indebted to him. Hey, Coach, uh, Jack Carlo with hey, Jack. the Buffalo's Wire. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, just with your background as a secondary coach, just mm -hmm. how excited are you? Uh, you know, as you mentioned, coach some of the guys in secondary, like, Yeah, I mean, you're phenomenally blessed. You walk into a spot and, uh, and you got competition everywhere. And, and I think, again, the way I view the game from a secondary perspective is, is let's make it hard on those guys on the outside. Um, early in camp, let's see who can cover. Uh, those guys up front, let's see who can rush. And, and let's put it all together. So uh, as we start working, you know, kind of the different packages, um, that's a, probably a different way I view the game as well. Uh, let's have our best 11 out there at all times. So if that's a certain group on first down and a certain group on second down and a certain group on third down, I think when you're in the NFL, you know, you have 46 guys on game day. So if you get a jersey, you got to play. So uh, whether you're a young player, whether you're a niche player, whatever it may be, you know, we should carve out a role for you if you're going to be here. So uh, it starts on the back end with me. Obviously, that's my, my history, my background, um, and then it kind of works its way up. So uh, really, really pleased with those guys. Hi, Coach. Adam Lister, Tiger 24-7. So hey, yeah. It's good to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you. Uh, you talked about tailoring your defense to what the players do well. I'm mm -hmm. curious, though, are there some uh, things that you want to be the identity yeah, I think, um, you know, Jonathan Gannon said it when he went to Philly. Uh, I think somebody asked him, you know, what's your, uh, what's your philosophy on defense? And he says, well, I don't have one. I have non-negotiables, right? I, we'll be the hardest playing team in the country. That's how I see it. That's how we need to be. We'll be great communicators, um, and we'll have a tribe mentality, meaning there's no job too big, no job too small. It takes all 11. But what the first huddle call is versus North Dakota State, I couldn't tell you. Uh, again, we're going to take the offseason. We're going to look at what we do well. Um, it's really easy to walk in some place and slide the playbook across and say, hey, you guys learn this because this is, this is what I do. It's not my defense. It's not the staff's defense. It's our defense. And again, it kind of goes back to that tribe mentality, the thought process of, hey, everybody's coming together for one common goal, right? We're all pulling the same way. So while it might look different than what we did in Cincinnati, uh, it's what works here. And, and I think the beauty of that is when you take that approach, each week is different. You know, you got to go into each week and say, hey, we have to stop this and then make them play left-handed. 
Um, you know, and that's how we'll view it. That's how we'll view each week. And you know, one week might look different than the next, uh, with the same goal of putting our best players in positions to be successful. I think whether you're with the Bengals, whether you're with the Chiefs, whether you're at Colorado or at Boulder High, you've got five or six guys on defense that can change the game. So those are shooters, right? So let's get those those guys shots, right? You guys are probably Nuggets fans, right? Uh, if Jamal doesn't get a shot in the corner every five possessions down, then something's wrong, right? So again, if we got a great blitzer, let's blitz them, right? If we got a great cover guy, let's let them play man, and, and let's not overthink it. So that'll be our thought process going into it. Um, you know, I recognize that it's very easy to say in the off season uh, when you haven't played a game, you're zero and zero, so everybody's happy. So am I. Uh, but it, that'll be our, our mindset, and that's what we believe in. Coach Troy Ray from the Denver Post. Okay. When you take the job with Coach Prime, uh -huh. I mean, it's very high profile. Yep. Like the most high profile program in the country last year. How did you kind of embrace that idea that you're going to be living on social media and coaching for a coach who's got very high expectations given his resume as both a player and, and now a coach? Yeah. Um, it's just football, I think is what I would say. Uh, I don't have social media. I don't know what goes on out there. Uh, I'm the old man who's like 38. Um, so I see a lot of cameras. I'm not really sure what they're filming or what they're doing. Uh, it's all about the guys to me. I, I think when you get a chance to do it your way and, and, and to lead men, that's really what it's about. So whether it's the staff, whether it's the players, um, you know, you get a chance to do it, again, your way. You've thought about doing this your whole life. Hey, I'm going to do this on the first day. And the first day comes, and then you say, oh, shit, what do I do on the second day? Um, so, you know, that part's fun. I mean, this process is, is great. It's, uh, there, there's great guys. It's a great staff. Um, if we play great defense, when we play great defense, the players deserve all the credit, especially in this climate of uh, NIL and insert whatever three letters you want. to. to they should get every accolade. If, if we're no good, it's all my fault. Right, so um, I don't want to be in the front. I want them to get all the credit because they're the ones that are putting in the work. Right, we're just we're we're the trainers. Right, we got to get them to the starting gate, and once the season starts and the gates open, uh, away we go. So that's kind of how I view it. Hi, Coach Troy Finnegan, CBS hey, Sports right. Report. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You've worked with Lou Anarumo for I did a while. One of the best in the business. What are some of the biggest things that you've learned from him about how to be a defensive coordinator that you can bring here? Yeah, Lou's been great to me. Lou came in five years ago. Um, you know, I was I was on staff with Marvin. I survived the purge. That's always a tough time uh, in any business. You know, a new guy comes in, and, and Lou gave me a chance. And uh, I think I, I, I see the way the game is played through Lou, you know, from, again, a personnel-driven thing. You know, we look different when we played the Chiefs than we did when we played Baltimore. It's just what it is. It's uh, Lamar Jackson versus Pat Mahomes. I mean, they're both elite, but they have a different skill set. So I think the packages, I think if you really look at kind of what we did on third down and who was playing and, and things like that, um, again, it's a little bit of a different game because you only have 46 guys, right? So it, again, if you're in Jersey, you got to play. You got to have a role. So let's clearly define that role um, and, and let's take that forward. I think especially with younger players, Lou's done a great job of giving them a little bit and letting them grow in that role and then their role expands, right? I think the worst thing you can do with a young player is throw them in the deep end to see if they can swim, right? Let's, let's let them wait out there a little bit, get some confidence, right? Get to playing fast communicate all those things that we talk about and then go from there. But Lou's been great, Zach's been great. Really, uh, the Bengals organization from uh, Mr. Brown, uh, his family, Duke Tobin, um, those, they changed my life. They gave me a chance. I was at a place for 12 years. Like, it, I'm not naive, that does not happen. Um, so it should kind of speak the volumes of, of how I feel about this place. You know, to walk away from something is, is never easy. Again, you have relationships with the staff, with ownership, with the players. Uh, but this was an opportunity that I just felt that strongly about. Coach Connor Rue for Denver Post. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, Coach? Uh, Travis Hunter specifically. I mean, obviously the most high-profile player on this defense. Who's that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, what do you see in his, you know, potential in year two here in Boulder? What's his ceiling? Kind of, how do you envision his role increasing in your system? Yeah, he's a unicorn. I, I think we all recognize that. Um, Travis can be elite at whatever he wants to be. I think the first thing you notice about Travis is. Um, he's genuine, he's who he is, right? There, there's no facade, there's nothing fake about him. Um, he, he's a great guy, so it all starts there, right? The better people you have in the locker room, the better locker room you'll have. Um, I, I think he can be a shutdown corner. Uh, he played some offense today. Unfortunately for us, uh, playing defense, I think he can be an elite receiver. Um, so he's a mismatch on each side of the ball. You know, the amazing thing about him is, is how he studies. You know, we had a conversation the day before practice, like, hey, Trav, you know, what can I do for you to make sure we put things in buckets and it's easy? He said, no, Coach, I'm good. I got it. Um, so I, I've been amazed at, at really, number one, who Travis is, and then his ability to retain information. So um, I think the sky's the limit for him. He can, he can be as good as, as anybody I've ever been around, and um, that, that's the standard for him. Last question. Uh, 
uh, Ross, maybe that one gets like a two question for one. Yep. What questions do you have um, for him and where you came in terms of job? Two, what metrics are most important to you when you assess how your defense is playing? Yeah, the first part, um, probably why me? Uh, why am I this lucky? Um, you know, we met and again, we hit it off. I, I think the the unbelievable thing about Coach Prime is he's the same guy every day. I, I think in any profession you've been in, you know, you, you kind of walk in like, who am I going to get today? I mean, he's the same guy. And, and when you work for somebody that you know what you're getting every day, I mean, that's a phenomenal gift. Um, and then in terms of metrics, it's always been the same thing for me. Yards don't equal points, right? If you want to be a great defense, you got to play great situationally, right? So that's third down, that's red zone, and that's kind of that middle eight, right? So think about it. There's Let's say a minute and 25 left. They're on R40. Uh, it's third and long. You know, do you go get them? Do you bring pressure? So now all of a sudden you can knock them out of field goal range. So you can punt. So again, Travis and Shador and the offense can go to work, and they score and they get the ball in the second half. And maybe it's a 10 to 14 point swing. So um, we got to be great situationally. You know, I, I think you win early downs in the off season. You know, the stuff that we're running today at nauseum is the same stuff we'll run uh, all year. And, and so we'll get great at early down stuff. And then third down will be a lot of fun uh, as the year goes on. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.